Hello, wonderful and beautiful people of God. This is your friend and your sister. You're welcome back to my channel, Elizabeth Moore. So today is going to be all about me. Yeah, I'm going to be asking questions for myself. <laughs> I've got some of my friends. They've dropped some questions. I've put them together and I'm going to be answering those questions today. I'm sure you do not want to miss this one. I'm sure you want to know some things about your girl, don't you? Yeah, so do not touch the dial and if you have not subscribed yet come on what are you waiting for subscribe to this channel <laughs> So I'm just thinking, I'm wondering, which one should I say first? Should I talk about myself first or the channel one? Well, I've written them down and let me see in the order. Oh, I think I have myself first. So let's talk about me first. And the first question that comes says, what book in the Bible would you read if you ever find yourself in the desert? What book? Would I ever read? What book of the Bible would I ever read? Well, before I go into this, let me just quickly let you know that most of you know that my channel is a Christian channel. I talk about all things Christianity. I talk about the fact that the veil has been torn and we can go directly to Jesus. And that is what my channel is all about. So if you say the things that are on my channel, I'm trying to point people to Christ. I know a lot of middlemen here on earth have... Um, tried to pull people out unknowingly unknowingly they've tried to pull people out of christianity people are beginning to lose faith in christianity but my channel um is a, is just to help us see to bridge the gap to see how people can be able to go directly to god instead of um going to where they will be duped by some pastors yeah so this by this book um question says what book in the Bible would you read if you ever find yourself in the desert? If I ever find myself in the desert, I think one of the things that I'll be thinking to have is um, some kind of knowledge, isn't it? Um, knowledge about things. I'll want to start thinking about how God can show me the way out or how he can speak to me. I'll be so desperate to hear something from him, wouldn't I? So I think I will be reading the book of Ecclesiastes. So if you think that is what you'll be reading as well, put it in the comment section. <laughs> the second one says, what's your favorite book in the Bible? Ah, my favorite book in the Bible is the story of Esther. I love the story of Esther so, so much. It speaks so much to me. It speaks about how, um, well, maybe because it's a woman, <laughs> it speaks about how a woman can really um dare to break things all in the name of the lord so i love the book of esther so 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 very much so i have this question of what motivated me to start my youtube channel well i used to do street evangelism yeah i used to do street evangelism but when covid hit the whole town became so quiet so quiet that um we couldn't there was no one outside practically nobody outside and it's all over the world it's not just here it's in a lot of places i mean um we couldn't go out anywhere so i couldn't go out to evangelize anymore but i was burning inside of me i needed to take the word out because i love the gospel and I, I knew the, how much the gospel has been for me how it has helped me so i really want to take it out there so i sat down and i thought about it that look i think at this time, everyone or a lot of people are turning to the social media. It wouldn't be a bad idea for me to start one as well. And it was free. <laughs> so I decided to start one at that time. And here I am today. <laughs> the next one says, how long did it take you to monetize your channel? And have you made your first paid yet? Unfortunately, no. I haven't monetized my channel and reason is because I didn't really take it um, seriously that I could get monetized. I wasn't really going into it for 
the sake of monetization. I was going into it because I just wanted to continue my evangelism and a bit of a teaching of the word of God. And um, the fact that um, a lot of um, pastors at that time, they were taking advantage of people. And um, I just really wanted to put the word out there because my channel is all about the veil is torn, just go to God directly. So I really wanted to push that message out there. So I wasn't looking at monetization. I wasn't looking at what requirements for monetization. What do I need to do? How often do I need to do them? You know, all them stuff and the things that will help me to get quickly to be monetized. I wasn't looking at those things. So yeah, not monetized, but I'm working to it now. I mean, if you get monetized to say the things that you love doing, why not? Yeah, so I mean, fine, I'm, I'm happy to um, try, learn, try to learn to do that now. So I'm on the way, I'm almost there. <laughs> And I'll get there. <laughs> yeah, so what do you like most about YouTube and what do you like the least? I like the fact that YouTube gives me the opportunity to reach um, a wider audience. Yeah, when I was doing the street evangelism, I could only meet, um, reach the people in my locality, can't I? Or probably when I see people that are traveling that have come to visit the country and um, they've just passes by from wherever those are the people that i could reach at that time but now going on the on the internet the youtube has helped me to reach a lot much wider audience i can speak to people in india speak to people in pakistan speak to people in um, um other parts of africa like egypt like morocco speak to people in u.s speak to people in australia so yeah that is one thing I like about the YouTube. It helps me to see a wider things. People, their communities, their needs, what they understand, what they know, how they see what I'm saying. Are they understanding what I'm saying? Am I communicating with them or not? So those are the things that I really love about YouTube. And what is the least thing that I don't like about YouTube? Well, I've heard people say that um, YouTube don't push the gospels. That's what I've heard people say. I'm not really sure. I can't, I mean, I can't really say this is it, that that is what it is. But a lot of people have said it. A lot of Christians have said it. And I'm not, I mean, I'm still open to learning more about that. But one thing that I know is that the love for the word of God generally is cold. A lot of people do not want to listen to the word of God. Even in churches, people don't want to hear that that's why you see a lot of comedians are in churches these days people um pastors now turn to be um they turn to be um, um, musicians themselves they turn to be comedians themselves they turn to be um um what do they call them inspirational motivational speakers these days instead of giving out the word of god mostly so i mean the whole world is generally um not um accepting the word so i mean youtube is people this is people that have put the algorithms there isn't it so i mean they're part of it and that is what is going to happen the bible has warned us that this is the things that will happen but that is not going to make me to stop i'm going to keep pushing mm -hmm. i'm going to keep pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing <laughs> so this question says where are you from i am nigeria yes i am a nigerian that is who i am i'm a nigerian <laughs> i'm from lagos as well <laughs> let me add that <laughs> how did you get connected with your hobby how did i get connected with my hobby well it was from being friends at first we met at a party to start with um then i was then still in school um we met at a party and then uh, we realized that we shared the same birth month i was born on the 25th he was born on the 23rd and then we were exchanging gifts because i was so excited to see um someone else that was born very close to my birth month and my birthday so we were exchanging gifts and one thing led to another i'm in his house today <laughs> this house today so i'm gonna leave that I'm just, I'm just gonna stop that one there and i want to thank my special friend that sent that question to me you know yourself thank you so very much for that 
but we'll talk about that next time in full details. <laughs> now, this one says, do you get tired of making videos? Oh, yes, I do. Tell me about it. I do get tired of making videos. But you know what? I have to keep on doing it. I do get tired of making videos. I know. The other one says, so what do you do to recharge in order to make more content? One of the th things that I have learned to do is diversification. What do I mean by that? I talk about God. I talk about Christianity. I also talk about myself. So when um, I'm getting a bit burnt out, I talk about myself. I do vlogs. Um, I ask permission from some men of God and ask them, can I put your things on my channel? And if they're happy with it, yeah. If they're not happy with it, I mean, I talk about myself. I do vlogs. If I travel, I take the camera along with me. I show myself. Um, I do shorts. I do some on my cookings if i have the time i just do some things just it's easy to get burnt out it is really easy even if you're a pastor of a church and if you keep um giving out sermons every sunday every sunday one sunday after the other you're gonna get burnt out you need time to rest you need to space things you know and you need to allow for god to put more into you isn't it you just don't want to be talking and talking and talking i mean in the in the in, in the multitude of two of talks there are lies so you wouldn't even know when you start lying you just start telling lies and you won't even know when you start telling lies so you have to slow it down a little bit listen to the holy spirit so you can know what you're doing and yeah so that's what i do um do i have a posting schedule i have tried <laughs> I have tried to have a posting schedule, but it runs out on me. <laughs> it runs out on me. I'll keep trying. I don't have a posting schedule, I'll tell you, but I try. <laughs> now, this one's quite interesting. I said, have you been harassed for your Christian content and how do you handle it? This is quite, um, when I was in street evangelism, yes, I have been harassed. In fact, I feared so much for my life at that time. There's, a, there's something we call safe spaces here in the United Kingdom. And in those safe spaces is that when you feel so threatened, you just run into one of them. And before, they won't even ask you any questions and they will shield you. So before we had things like that, I've just finished this evangelism on the streets, just preaching and all them stuff with my friends. And it was time for us to go home. People have found their different ways. And I was just going and I just felt this man walking behind me and i knew he was working he was coming for me there were lots of people on the on the streets walking on the road and i knew he was coming for me he was really coming for me and i just ran into the same space store that was close by and he came into the same space store with me and i went to stand by one of the the security guard that was there and the guy was looking at me and was thinking am i okay he wanted to really ask that am i okay but he was looking at me he was looking at everywhere trying to see and then i was looking at the person but i could know that he was looking at me and then when the other guy noticed that the security guy was really looking at him and everything he just had to run out of there and then when he ran out of there i told the security guy that yeah i think um it's after me and i don't know why he's after me so the guy asked me to stay in the store for a while until i was able to go home so yeah i've been harassed on the social media have i been harassed yes i know some people do some spammy comments but this i'm not sure if this one is a spammy comment or not but i was actually harassed by a, another christian um i wouldn't want to mention her name and then um she was like uh what is this about what am i saying and all them stuff but you know what i just tried to ignore her and i deleted her messages and she kept on sending it and then it got to a point where someone i watched someone else's video and i saw her put the same comment so that was why i said i'm not sure if it's a spammy one but that was one of the things that happened at that time which is i mean it's fair you just go on your <laughs> thank you 
so that was one of the things that happened at that time so yeah it's fine the harassment just it does come doesn't it it does come the next one says as a christian channel what are the few topics that are off limits one thing i wouldn't want to go into talk about because i'm not really familiar with that area i don't know how to advise anyone in that area is the issue of sex sorry <laughs> you'll be asking the wrong person <laughs> How do you balance your home and work life while still producing content? It is hard. It's hard. It's hard work. <laughs> How do I balance it? To be honest, I don't think I've found a balance to it yet. But I just keep doing things the way they come, don't I? I keep doing things the way they come. I mean, if it's, I mean, I think that is one of the things that has affected my schedules yeah i think that's one of the things that affected them and um i'll keep trying maybe i can learn better from other people <laughs> if anybody has anything to help me on that please drop it in the comment section i'm ready to learn <laughs> now let's talk about some things about the channel i think i've just missed everything together now but doesn't matter let's go this one is about the channel about what i do and the first one says how do we increase the kingdom through god-centered content i mean the first thing from that i would talk about is matthew 6 33 seek ye first the kingdom of god and every other thing shall be added unto you god-centered content very very important i know it's in this kind of world where we are at this time where um, the love of God is waxing cold where people are turning to um, idols in forms of money, in forms of um, material things. It's hard for some people to not talk about material things, does it? And we call it prosperity preaching. A lot of things have gone on on that. I've seen people talking about angels depositing money in your bags and a lot of people falling for it. I've seen people saying different kind of things, selling a lot of merchandise, just like what happened in the temple where Jesus went to wipe every one of them out from the temple. People are still doing it today, monetizing things, not selling things in the house of the Lord, in the name of the Lord, key holders, um, anointing oil, this one, that one, different things, merchandise. It's horrible. It is horrible. So we need to push out more the word of God. If we make people understand God, if we make people have a relationship with God, it will be so much, Christianity will be so much easier. The only reason why we think it's not easy is because the word has been adulterated. We don't have the pure word. It's not there. So if we push out the pure word to people, God-centered messages, people's hearts will be, I mean, the Holy Spirit will move. We don't need to do any abracadabra. We don't need to do any um, fall down and die. We don't need to push people to die. We don't need to say, oh, thus say yet the Lord. We don't need, we are all prophets. The Bible says that we are gods. We are small letter G gods. And we are made in the image and likeness of God, not really facially. But we are made the way God wants it to be. We can hear from God. We can see from God. I don't need a seer to tell me that this is what my father is saying. We all have the ability to listen to God, to hear from God. If only we can push out these messages, people's hearts will be turned for the Lord. So yeah, thank you so much at Mastering the Man for giving me that question. The other one says that, does the Bible answer modern dilemmas yes <laughs> i mean in my channel i have the series that i'm doing and it's called the joseph series now in this joseph series i'm looking at the life of joseph what are the things that we can learn it started from the um, book of genesis chapter 33 
and I'm going to stop at 48. And the minute I think I'm about 44 or 45 thereof, if you've not seen it, get to my channel and have a look at the Joseph series. What are the things that we can learn from Joseph that is still happening to us now? We see how he was betrayed by his brothers. It still happens today, doesn't it? We have our blood brothers and sisters. They're betraying us today. But we learn from Joseph what to do. Also, I did this very sh uh, a short video, um, I think a few days ago, that was talking about our choices. The Bible makes us to understand that. Solomon had 700 wives, 300 concubines. He loved the Lord. His heart was for the Lord. But guess what? He was sacrificing on their altars. Why? Because his choices for the wives led him into doing that. You see, they led him into doing that. So they don't, do, do such things happen today? Does our love for money, our love for material things, does it push us away from the Lord? Oh, certainly it does. So these are things that we can learn from, from in the Bible. And we can see how do these people manage these things? How can I manage it? Even if you don't see it in the Bible, you can always go to the Lord in prayers and say, Holy Spirit, come and help me. How can I overcome this? How can I give my life to you? You see, so yeah, thank you for that question as well. They do answer modern dilemmas. They do. And the very last one I have here says, how do you schedule your videos? Like, how do you make plans about your monthly targets? Or what do you do? I think that question I've been partly answered, but I'm going to answer it again. Um, how do I schedule my videos? I don't know. I'm trying. <laughs> well, maybe when I'm not at work. Because I work in a school, so I mean, when we have holidays, a bit of holidays, I try to get a lot of videos, put them together as many as I can and schedule them. But guess what? During term time, all those videos, they run out. <laughs> and I'm back to square one. <laughs> because I don't have the time. But because it's my passion, I squeeze time. So I run a bit um, later than I should. But I mean, I'm getting there. The Holy Spirit is carrying me on his wings. Yeah, so I'm getting there. <laughs> so um, how do you make plans for monthly targets? I think I do not have a monthly target. But at this time, I think I have a target, which I think I'm almost at the verge of failing it, is it? <laughs> it's in that one. Because I have a target that before the end of August, I should get closer to monetization but i'm still about more than half no not half i'm about i don't want to say the exact figure <laughs> i don't want to say the exact figure but i'm about a thousand hours away <laughs> let me just leave it there yeah yeah so i'm gonna do all i can to try to see um how to Get to monetization quickly if I have to. Um, I mean, it's taken me a while now, hasn't it? So I'll just keep at it because it's a lot of work. It is a lot of work. And if you have a regular job and you have that one again, you have your family to take care of, you have a lot of things to do, you have your church to attend to. It is a lot. It is a lot. I know this is like my own ministry. This is like what I do. So this is like what I do. But again, it is a lot. So thank you very much for bringing your questions to me. And I'll be happy to answer your questions again. If you have any more questions, please don't forget. You can drop it in the comment section. I can have another talks like this. And we can all have other, I mean, we can all enjoy things together. So thank you. Thank you for watching. Subscribe. If you've not subscribed, remember I am walking to monetization. So 